Uh, I think you're going to love it. Please give it up for Corp for now. Sup, New York City. Uh, so, yeah, I'm caught. I'm caught. Um, like, not in the middle of something. You know, I'm a person. Not a place you can bounce your balls. Well. <laughs> or scream, I object. You know. Because he would object, right? <laughs> I will have, okay. <laughs> Some of you. <laughs> That's okay. It's not hurtful at all. That's all good. That's all good. You know, actually, something that really sort of annoys me about my name is that people just get it, like, stuff it up a lot. Like, um, like I was at like, Melbourne about six years ago when I ordered a caramel macchiato from, uh, from Starbucks and they write your name on it. And they were, and I, they called my name out, and I was like, "Hey, yes." Yeah, and I looked at the cup; it said Cockney. <laughs> Pretty sure that's not a name. <laughs> or, or like, I'll be on the phone to someone, and they'll say, "Oh, yeah, Cockney is that is that with a C or a K?" <laughs> not a Kardashian, mate. So, <laughs> pretty certain it starts with a C. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Chris Jenner. <laughs> What a babe. <laughs> um, now, you know, it's something that actually sort of um, that tickles me. Um, people find it really hard to, I guess, I don't know, believe or whatever it is that I am attracted to both women and men. I date both. Not at the same time. Not an animal. <laughs> um, but, like, I was talking to a person at work uh, about six months ago, uh, one of my mates, and we were in the front bar and... Someone said to me, oh, I said to him, oh, you know, I've been dating this girl and we talked about, like, her aesthetics, you know, like, that she was really hot. Um, and then a regular overheard and um, he's like, cool, come here. And I was like, shit, this is going to be, like, a homophobic remark or something. And he says, um, I heard what you're talking about. And, like, no offence, which inherently means I'm about to offend you. <laughs> but please don't be offended. <laughs> um... No offence, but uh, you're pretty fucking hot to be a lezo. <laughs> Firstly, thank you. <laughs> Secondly, who says lezo anymore? <laughs> I feel like I was transported back into 1997 or something. Um, which brings me to my next subject. Guys have this weird penis pride. I don't know what it is, but I was at the same place. I work in hospitality, and I, I was uh, in a, on a gaming shift, and I was chatting with a few of my uh, few of my friends. We're all on the same shift together with some some other bar staff, and um, one of my one of my colleagues said to me, I don't know how we got onto this subject, but we're talking about strap-ons. <laughs> Talk about weird shit down there. Um, and one of my friends is like, surely not all lesbians use strap-ons. I'm like, mate, who do you think it's marketed towards? You know, I, you know, I'm sure there's some like kinky guys out there or whatever. But like, and he's like, oh yeah, no, nah, I guess I, I know what you mean. But like, and then he, and then I was like, you know, because I, I've used one. <laughs> and he, and it was funny because he went to walk away, and then he heard that and he stopped and he walked back and he's like, he leaned back. And then he says, my brother. <laughs> like, who has that amount of penis pride, you know? Like, a, a girl's not going to be, like, so excited. They don't have vagina pride. They're not going to say, oh, yeah, my sister. <laughs> you know? Like, for, firstly, because it's not possible to strap a vagina on. <laughs> Unless he's someone like Donald Trump or something. <laughs> Um, who here works in hospitality? Anybody? Nobody. Sweet. Um, yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's a pretty good gig if you, if you meet some, some cool people. But um, in, well, I think it's basically a, uh, it's an industry of faking it, you know? Fake smiles, fake giggles when customers say stupid shit. You know, I think, I think that's why there's so many women in the industry. Because we're really good at it. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, we've been doing it for a really t- long time. <laughs> um, you know, uh, but you know, sorry, hang on. I'm just getting that like vibe. There's a couple of guys in the they don't want to say it, but it's like I'm reading them like, oh no, nah, no girls ever faked it with me. <laughs> oh, wait, wait, me and my magical pony. <laughs> Right, mate. Okay, sweet. See the shining exception. You got the penis of all penises, do you? Sweet. Lucky you. Well, for everyone else out there, everyone else, at some point in your loving, long-term, short-term, whatever type of relationship you're in, your woman, your girl, your bae, has at some point or another in your relationship thought to herself, oh, my God, would he just come already? <laughs> Right, but instead of being a bitch about it, instead of laying there like a potato, like a starfish, she cheers her man on. You know, she cheers it out of him. I don't know about you, but in my book, that's a true bloody good woman. If you've got a girl that's going to fake it till you make it, man, shit. Keep her, put a ring on it. Cool Beyonce. (laughs) That brings me to my next subject, actually. Quiet sex. (laughs) Don't get it. Do not trust it. (laughs) Nah, nah. You know, so many people get, like, shit for, like, having loud sex. You know, like, they're really enjoying it. Oh, nah, that's just stupid. She must be faking it. Well, firstly, I think we just, you know, concluded that makes her a pretty pretty good woman. (laughs) Secondly, maybe... Just maybe she's had a hard muscle or apparatus thrust inside of her and she's let out a little bit of glee, a little bit of involuntary glee, a little bit of verbal confirmation to that effect, you know. I don't know about you, but if I am having sex with a woman, I want to hear some uh, acknowledgement, you know, (laughs) that I'm on the same train, we're reaching the same goal. Um, Speaking of penises... uh, (laughs) We weren't speaking of penises, but I was speaking, speaking of, Maybe I should like, look inside myself about tonight's set. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, have any blokes in the audience ever thought to yourself, shit, I don't really, I really like my balls. They're a bit low, a little bit wrinkly. Look, you don't have to admit it, but uh, look, backstory. So my mum is in the medical field, right? And she sends me this pharmacy journal. And it's got like this little thing of like new inventions and stuff. And this dude in LA at the moment, he's pioneering new uses for Botox to get even the most unimaginable wrinkles out. There's like 15 men that are like giving up their time and, you know, and for the painful injection into their balls, um, you know, to, to achieve younger looking balls, you know, right? No, I don't know. That's great, but um, what are you doing this for, dude? <laughs> Do you think that your girls ever thought to herself, "Oh, if only he had long, younger looking," it was the younger looking. If only he had uh, less wrinkly balls, I would uh, I'd totally have one more one-on-one time with those glorious meat lollies. <laughs> no, I can guarantee you that if she's down there, she will never make eye contact with your scrotum, mate. <laughs> All right. All right, that's great. Um, I've been Court Fennell and you've been great tonight. Thank you.